Well, good afternoon, everyone. Hope everybody had a good weekend uh, away from football, and uh, our guys got uh, a good three-day uh, weekend, good break, and uh, came back yesterday, had our first workout, and today we'll put pads back on for the first time and um, get ready to play a really good uh, TCU team. We talk about you know, one-week seasons, and we've got six left, and um, they keep the stakes keep getting higher, and uh, we get a really good TCU team at their place. They're playing really well. I, I was able to watch a little bit of it uh, on Saturday, saw more of the second half, but uh, uh, Duggan's playing really, really well, playing with a lot of confidence. Um, you can see how their defense has, has continued to grow um, in their new system that they're running, uh, and uh, they're playing with a lot of confidence. So it'll be a big challenge for us, and we could have a great week of preparation. What exactly is the TCU offense and Duggan doing that's giving defenses so much trouble? Uh, a couple things. One, his ability to uh, run the football, whether it's design runs, scrambles, has been uh, um, a nightmare for teams, as well as you know spreading the ball out. Uh, uh, the receivers is playing at a really, really high level right now. The running back's playing at a high level. They're blocking up front really well. And then you mix in the amount of tempo that they're running. Uh, they're getting a lot of people misaligned and, and just throwing some easy smoke screens that are uh, sometimes you think would be knocked down for three or four, and they're getting 15, getting 18 yards, and then um, they're able to take and, and win on their shot plays. And uh, but uh, it's I think it's a credit to where Duggan's at and how he's playing because um, uh, he's making them go. The TCU defense, what exactly are they doing on defense and why has it been effective? Well, they're doing the 3-3-5 like a lot of people are. Um, uh, and uh, just watching them evolve over the year uh, or through the season, I should say, uh, you can tell how much more confident the guys are in where they're supposed to be, what what how they're trying to attack teams. Um, they played a bunch of man coverage against Oklahoma State that has really talented wide receivers, uh, and there wasn't a lot of easy throws uh, for Sanders to make. And uh, they just they made plays on balls and and knocked things away and um, did a great job of stymieing the run game uh, with their linebackers and and their front so active and and safeties and. Um, you know they're they're playing some simple things really really well. You mentioned last week that the team was pretty beaten up. We were thankful for the off week. Uh, how is the health looking? Is well, we'll find out today. There was a number of guys that didn't participate uh, yesterday that we anticipate uh, practicing some today or tomorrow. But uh, everybody that played against Iowa State is right now on target to, to play this Saturday. I promise I'm not trying to jinx anything here with this question, but Adrian, six games in, not a single interception. How's he been able to do such a good job, keep taking care of the ball? Uh, it's something we emphasize um, and something that uh, he's conscious of to, to make sure that uh, in tight ball games, it, maybe it's a turnover here or there that uh, could flip the tide of a game. And um, you know, understanding that sometimes uh, I've got to check the ball down or I've got to tuck it away. Uh, and maybe punt isn't a bad thing it, rather than forcing a throw. Uh, that's part of it. Part of it is his maturity, his the fact that he's played so much football. Uh, and I think Coach Klein is putting him in some really good um, situations and calls to be successful. And us trying to stay ahead of the chains and not being a bunch of third and eight plus where you m might typically force the ball and being in a lot more third and shorts. Um, you know, it gets you it opens up the playbook a little bit more, and and uh, he's making good decisions. I want to ask, the season has gone on. You guys have leaned on the run a little bit more than the pass, but you're still even as you do that. And teams put more guys yeah. in the box. You keep getting yards. What's the, been the key to continuing to rush for yardage on the ground, even if the defense knows it's coming? A lot of different sets that we're we're doing some run game out of. Um, the, the fact that uh, we've got two guys back there and, that have been really productive in Deuce and Adrian, as well as um, probably, hopefully, getting more out of DJ 
because uh, he had such a good finish to that game. And our offensive line and tight ends are blocking really well. And we know that uh, uh, based on the situation, you know, based on the game situation, uh, who we're playing, what they're doing to us, uh, that uh, we're going to have one of those games where we're going to have to throw it uh, probably like we did against Oklahoma. But, but DJ, at the end of that game, how much confidence did you you get in him watching him run up the clock? It there? was fun to watch him run with that kind of uh, confidence and and running hard and and being physical and uh, you know there's some some things that we know that he has the capabilities of doing that he showed for sure on Saturday. Um, I haven't really dove deep into the the, the game plan with with Coach Klein yet, but uh, uh, obviously he's going to be a part of that and finding ways to to get him some touches. How impressed have you been with, with Quentin Johnston in the film you've seen? Yeah, the last few weeks he's been off the charts, one of the best receivers in, in college football. He's always been a productive player. He shows up uh, every year when we play him because uh, we've played him a few times that – you know, how are we going to control this guy? You can't shut him down. He's too talented. But uh, the last few weeks, um, he's taken his game to another level. They're finding different ways to get him the football. What has been so impressive is is the yards after catch. Uh, he can always go up and get it because he's a big, strong, physical receiver. But catching the ball on under routes or on quick stop routes or smoke routes and and – making somebody miss and breaking two or three tackles. And then, you know, what seemingly could be a five or six yard gain has been turning into, you know, big plays for him. And then that's where we have to do a tremendous job uh, on the perimeter of getting off blocks uh, as well as tackling. And then you touched on a little bit with, with Fitz's first question, but is there anything specific that you've seen from Duggan that kind of explains kind of the, the leap in play that he's had this year? Um, no, nothing, nothing specific. I've always been a big fan of his. Um, I, I think he's an unbelievable competitor, and uh, I remember him playing. As a, I think he was a true freshman in 19, and, and he had some really good plays against us here. Uh, and, and I know he's uh, had some ups and downs, as as a lot of players have, and, and he's always come back. He's, yeah, he's a competitor. Um, you know, I, I met him – I can't remember if it was last year at the at the Big 12 Media Days, and uh, just uh, I thought he was a first class kid, and uh, um, he deserves the success he's having because uh, it hasn't been easy. But uh, um, you can tell that uh, the players trust him and the players rally around him, and um, he's been impressive. A dumb question, but in your experience, is there a clear schematic and preparation advantage for a team with the bye week versus a team not? You know, I don't think so. Um, you know, you could say you're fresher. You could say that um, you should keep playing because it's it's going well for you. Um, once once it kicks off at seven o five or seven ten or whatever time it's going to kick off, it you can throw all those things out the window um, because you're you're still going to. Uh, do what you do probably on both sides, and, and you're not going to reinvent the wheel uh, on either side of the ball. Um, and so I don't think it's a, it's a huge deal, especially once it gets kicked off. Some yards in the passing game, but from an efficiency standpoint, I think you're among the best in the Big 12. Is there anything you can point to that's really worked for you guys? You know, just preaching to the guys that uh, there's really good offenses in this league and in college football, and um, oftentimes it's – you forgetting the play that happened to you so that you can um, get your focus back and go to the next play and find a way to get a stop. And um, we were very successful a couple weeks ago in not allowing Iowa State to get in the end zone and forcing them into field goals. And um, typically field goals don't get you, don't get you beat um, and touchdowns in the red zone do. And so I think our coaching staff on defense has done a great job of, of keeping the guys focused and realize that Every offense in, in in this league, especially, is going to be able to move the football. You just have to find a way to get stops in the red zone. Kind of talking about that, but Oklahoma State moved the ball in TCU, and they stalled out in the red zone. They had to kick a lot of field goals. What is the key offensively to breaking through there and scoring touchdowns? Uh, it's kids making plays more than anything. You know, the field shrinks. That's the easy answer. The field shrinks, and and it's just not as much space out there. But uh, it still comes down to, I would assume, if you 
even on some of our times where we've gotten stalled out, it's we missed a block, um, missed a read in the throw game, missed an ID in the run game, whatever it may be, and it's just coming down to in, in when the when the space gets that much shorter, uh, the margin for error is that much smaller. So you have to be able to um, to make plays, and it's not just a, a skill kid making a play. Maybe it's a big block by a wide receiver, or a big block by an offensive lineman. About Austin Moore uh, coming into the season, to where he is now, how much growth have you seen from him, and where has he, expectation-wise, gone for you? Well, the easy thing you'd say he's made a lot of growth in in every asset or uh, aspect of the game, but that's the expectation that I have for Austin. I know it's the expectation that Austin has for himself. He's a very humble, confident kid in his ability as well as knowing how he fits within the defense. And so for any of us uh, to say we're surprised by Austin Moore, you watch that kid work every day in the winter, the spring, the summer, and the fall. It doesn't happen by accident. He's a warrior. He's a kid that's playing with a lot of confidence, playing really fast. Uh, he's without question one of our best defensive players right now. You'd ask any of our guys that are, quote, our marquee guys that you'd talk about, and they would point to Austin Moore as a guy that's having an all-conference year. Coach, what, halfway through the season, what's the biggest thing you've learned about this team? Um you know, resolve, um, resiliency, belief, um, block out the outside noise, um, and just focus on the, the next day and focus on the next opportunity. And, and uh, um, you know, it's not always going to be pretty, uh, but if you can continue to believe that you're – that uh, believe in the plan, believe in each other, believe uh, that you're going to find a way, uh, it's been – it's been really cool to watch the last three weeks us um, survive and attack the adversity that we faced and not just say, oh, well, we're facing adversity. Here we go. It's, all right, who's going to stand up and make a play? How are we going to get this thing stopped and flip the momentum? Because we've had it in Oklahoma, we've had it in Tech, and we've had it in Iowa State where all three of those games could have gone the other way. But uh, uh, our guys have such great belief in, in each other and belief in the plan, belief in the coaches that uh, um, it you know, kind of carries over once you get in the fourth quarter. Had six sacks against TCU, yeah. ended up being four. Yeah. Right, right now he's midseason All American by the Athletic. How motivated? How how good is he playing right now? And how motivated do you feel like he is for TCU? Uh, you know, Felix motivated to play anybody. He just loves to play the game, and um, uh, I, I'd forgotten that that was the game that he had that. But you know, Felix has a big challenge on his on his hands. They're they're really good up front, and uh, they get rid of the ball and. They've got a kid back there that's very elusive. And so it's a big challenge for us on defense in general. And, and uh, you know, f when we're really good on defense, it's guys like Felix and Eli and um, Khalid, whoever else, getting pressure on a quarterback. And, and if we give Duggan all day to sit back there, it's going to be a long day for us. What is Khalid's health leading into this week? He should practice today. Um, on a limited basis, but uh, we anticipate him being able to play. Past conversations with Connor, Ry Connor Riley, he's talked about uh, expecting almost a true freshman offensive lineman to step into the mm -hmm. competition. Who would that be, one or two guys? Uh, well, a number of them have an opportunity. Pastore's probably right now the closest. All these guys um, that are the true freshmen, they're, they're not – 295, 300 pounds, or they're, you know, they're in their 270 somewhere, and they're truly in a developmental year. Um, they're getting some reps because of the loss of TP and uh, uh, Liney for a while. They're getting some reps just with the, the second uh, offensive line. I think that's uh, benefited a kid like Pastore the last couple weeks. Um, you know, there's a good chance he might play in one of these last six ball games. We sure as heck hope we can keep his redshirt year so that a year from now he is 290 and uh, um, you know more equipped uh, to play uh, Big 12 football. Uh, but they're getting a great learning experience from a, a terrific group of veteran offensive linemen that have all had adversity and all have come through it um, uh, by being a guy that was sitting for a couple of years like Gilly sat for three, four years, same with KT, and getting that opportunity. I think they're learning from him. 
best story shift from guard to tackle? He could play either one, you bet. And Panzer is your backup center? Yep. Uh, and then you'd shift around accordingly at that right guard position? Yep. So Carver would be in at right tackle, and um, Dawson would be in anywhere on the left side. You know, he'd probably be at left guard, but Coop could flip out. But uh, um, Hadley would probably go in at center. We're still playing line gang at center. We're playing Sam Hecht at center. The, the benefit the last few weeks of Liney being out, which wasn't a great benefit other than the fact that we, we uh, just missed him for the one game, was it allowed Sam Hecht to get some more snaps at center. And then the last week, we were able to give line gang a few more snaps at center. So I think it's going to help all those guys. Um, and the fact that they have so much versatility because line E can play guard, center, and tackle now, and Heck can play center and guard. A little bit earlier you said that limiting interceptions is an important thing and something that you guys focus on. Of course, in Adrian's past, that's something that he struggled with. Was there a time when he came here that you guys kind of had to work through some of those things and get him to the point where he's at now controlling the football? Um, not really. You know, we, we didn't practice with him until August. Um, and uh, he's always done a really good job of, of taking care of the football since he's been here. And I, I don't know what happened in the past. Everybody asked me about that. I wasn't, I wasn't with him. So I really don't know what happened. Um, I don't really care what happened. I'm just excited that he's here uh, and uh, takes, tr takes coaching from, from Coach Klein. Um, He's a real calm, patient kid if something does go wrong. He's thrown picks in practice, trust me. He, he has. And he just, you know, it's like a kid made a play or I made the wrong read. And you, he, he doesn't compound that with a second mistake. He understands it's part of the game. Um, and uh, I think his maturity allows him to handle the adversity that he does have. Maybe – he made a, he makes a, a poor read, should give it, and keeps it, and gets tackled for a three yard loss. It doesn't bother him. He's like, okay, I made the wrong read. I got to go make make the next play, and that's a sign of a mature guy that's played just a ton of football. From a coach's perspective, as you talk about his maturity and his calmness, how much fun is it or enjoyable is it for you to coach someone who's always just focused on the next play and the next snap? Yeah, it's re it's re it's refreshing. Um, in the day and age of, of different things we see in college football, Collins one that gets to coach him all the time. I, I get to meet with him on you know a few days during the week, and we watch a little film, and um, we'll do that uh, after this, and, and just uh, he'll pick my brain and I'll pick his brain on things that we're seeing uh, from a defensive perspective, and all the QBs will will do that with me. It's just fun to um, you know we have some light moments in there talking about other things as well. Uh, it's. It's just, I think, a calming uh, effect that he has, that Coach Klein has on him as well. Uh, and, and it's just been, it's been fun to watch um, Adrian continue to grow in our system and continue to learn from how we're doing things within our offense. Kind of along those same lines, uh, maybe a criticism his early on was that he was being too careful mm -hmm. and not to turn the ball over what what has he done to be able to to keep doing that but at yeah. the same time being more aggressive um the the easy th answer would be we told him to let it rip i mean that's the easy answer and um he has he's he's let it rip in the run game he's let it rip in the throw game um every game's going to be different i can't tell you if he's going to have six design runs two design runs 16 design runs this week we're going to throw it 15 times. If he's going to throw it 35 times, I don't think any of us know any of that stuff until we get into the flow of the game and see how everything goes um, and what the defense has given us. And um, he he doesn't know half the time how it's going to how it's going to go because I, I think most people go into the game go into game saying how do we stop 22, and from there. We try to figure out how we're going to attack them based on how they're going to try to stop 22. And every game has been, every game really has has played out differently for us. And also, you talked about Duggan. How much do they? How much of his run game is designed and quite a much? bit, um, quite a bit. They've run a lot of, you know, read zone keep with him. They've run some quarterback draw. He's a physical runner. Uh, he punishes uh, tacklers that come and try to strike him and. Uh, um, you know, he's, uh, he always 
he always bounces back up. He's taking some shots, gets back up, and and uh, you think maybe he's nicked up, and then he'll throw uh, a seam ball or an out route, you know, uh, on the money with great pace. And and so obviously he's a really tough player too. And and you know I, you can tell that the team feeds off of his toughness. Also, Nate Matlack, how is he? Back to full strength? Or? Yeah, we feel he is now. Uh, I think uh, the open week probably benefited Nate as much as it did anybody. Uh, he was still not 100% against Iowa State. We shelved him most of last week and gave him a chance to get uh, quite a bit more rehab, um, build, this, build some strength in it. Now, you know, a number of those guys that have been banged up, um, now it's getting their conditioning back. And, and, you know, I don't know if they're going to play 30 plays or play 55 plays based on the tempo of the game. But, uh, um, you know, being at night it probably helps guys like that that uh, haven't had as much of the of the running. Uh, I know it's going to be warm there, but uh, uh, it'll be it'll be dark by the time we get this thing started. So um, but Nate's uh, feeling a lot better. It's, it's always about going one one and oh. Um, you're ranked TCU's top 10, 7 o'clock kickoff. Does this have any different kind of feel this week? No, it really doesn't, you know. Um, and I think you can see it in the landscape of the Big 12 in the games that uh, I was able to follow last week. Anybody can beat anybody. And it comes down to a handful of plays that ultimately get made in the fourth quarter. And if you make it more than that, you're probably missing the boat and you're probably not preparing for what you have to face for four quarters, one play at a time. And so um, our guys are uh, excited uh, about the challenge of, of going to TCU. We know it's going to be a really good environment. It's going to be really loud. We're playing an excellent football team that our guys know are playing with a lot of confidence. Um, and so we got we have to weather the storm, so to speak, from the environment and, and uh, um you know the the level of speed and physicality that they have, and and get this game into the fourth quarter with a chance. Coach at the uh, at the Y and Z positions for the receivers for TCU, every single player of the six listed on the three D, except for two, are six four and above. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of challenges does that present to your guys in the secondary? Yeah, it's a it's a big challenge uh, because they all uh, go up and get the football, and, and that six four plays a lot taller. Um, when they go catch it at the highest point. And so you know, our ability to try to disrupt timing is going to be important. Our ability to mix in man and mix in zone and, and mix in you know, dropping our eight and rushing four, five, and six uh, guys is going to be important as well and given different looks. But uh, uh, without a doubt, that's one of the advantages they have with the ability to run the football with the running back and the quarterback and then the great size they have and speed at wide receiver. Do you think depth at cornerback this week with guys like Omar Daniels and Jacob Parrish will be? Yeah, oh, everybody's got to be ready to roll. Um, not uh, just at, at corner, but at, at safety. We're going to have to play a lot of guys. We're gonna, just what we've done every, all the time. We're going to have to play a bunch of players, and um, everybody's got to rise up and, and uh, answer the bell when they get the opportunity. What kind of progress, speaking of cornerbacks, is Kobe McAllister making? He's doing well. Um, he's making more progress probably on special teams right now than he is as a corner because he, you know, he missed so much of fall camp um, with an injury that he's fully healed from. But uh, you just lose a lot of that teaching time, and so where his um, oh, biggest help for us right now would be on special teams.